Hello everyone, I'm Oren from Awesome Shot Studios, a corporate and event videographer here in the Bay Area. I've got a quick unboxing, overview, and comparison video today for the Kame TV Boltson LED Fresnel light, the Q55 II. It's a recent upgrade to the original Q55, which I've been happily using for a while now. It's been invaluable for interview and event videos, and I'm glad to report that Kame TV took everything I liked about it and made it better. Along the way, addressing some of the shortcomings of the original. If you haven't used an LED Fresnel light before, I'll briefly explain why you should add one to your kit. Unlike panel lights with multiple array of lensed LED bulbs, the form factor of a Fresnel provides power, focus, and long throw into a compact package, thanks to the use of the chip on board LED elements. Adding a lens and focusing mechanism allows you to cast clean shadows, control beam size, and project the light at a greater distance than a panel light. We're going to put that to the test today in a comparison video to see how well this revised version holds up to the original Q55, the workhorse Dato DLH4 tungsten, and even a 300 watt tungsten Fresnel. All the footage you see here was shot using a Bolton LED as the key light, either unmodified or with a softbox. Now, full disclosure, KMTV has supplied me with a two light kit for this comparison, but the opinions I present are my own and they do not review the videos before I post them. Let's do a quick unboxing and take a look at the two light kit as supplied by Kame TV. The first thing you'll notice is a compact lightweight ABS hard case that offers great protection and organization for all the necessary components. We've got the two daylight balanced lights, power supplies and cables, three filters for each light, Velcro cable wraps, a remote controller, barn doors and a DTAP cable. Optional accessories include a Bowens converter and a softbox. The size, weight, and design are quite similar to the original Q55 with the top mounted knobs, rear backlit LCD display, and a battery slot below. The biggest visual difference you might notice is the inclusion of two NPF battery slots instead of the single slot of the Mark I. In my previous comparison, I noted that a single NPF battery can't usually supply enough current to operate the Q55 at full power, so I had to resort to a V-mount in many instances when I didn't want to be tied to the mains. Thankfully, Kame TV made the smart move of allowing you to use two batteries, which will easily supply the current needed to run this light at 100% and possibly double your runtime. Of course, your runtime is going to vary based on the output and the battery capacity. The display has been completely redesigned to show the additional features and modes that are now included in the Mark II. And a Wi-Fi indicator light shows you when you're connected to the Boltson app. You no longer need a Wi-Fi dongle for the light, which is another great move on their part. The right side knob still controls the dimming function, but the left side is now dedicated for the setting adjustments. They both rotate and push down to scroll through the menus. Thankfully, the remote commander also allows you to make the same adjustments when your light is rigged out of reach. The Bolton app currently doesn't make provisions for the special lighting effects modes, although you still have access to power and dimming functions, which are the ones used most often. The yoke has been thoughtfully improved with the addition of a pass-through hole for adding a photographic umbrella. So you now have two tightening knobs instead of a single knob on the Mark I. What's most remarkable though is that Kame TV reports a 40% improvement in output, which I'll be putting to the test in the next part of this review. Both the Mark I and the Mark II are fan-cooled units, and though it was never disruptive, it was audible in the Mark I and always active. I believe the Mark II's fan is now thermally triggered as I've yet to hear it spool up. If that's indeed the case, then it's another big improvement to an already versatile, powerful light. Before we put this light up against the competition, let's talk about the new functions already built into the Mark II. The first thing you'll notice on power up is that you now have a strobe function on the home page of this light. You can adjust the frequency from one to 10 cycles per second without going into the special effects lighting menu. Pressing down on the dimmer and mode knob you'll get the second menu, which currently includes three lighting modes, bonfire, lightning, and breath. All these modes are adjustable for brightness and intensity, although it's best done through the remote commander, which allows you to see the levels and intensity for both. The final menu is a group and channel allocation, which will be used for remote operations. If both lights are set to the same channel, then you can actually control them from a single light, which might come in handy in certain situations. Now that we've covered the new features of the Mark II, Let's see how it stacks up against three popular competitors. Keep in mind, this is a daylight only unit, which means the entire COB chip is dedicated to a single color. 
most bicolor units will incorporate 50% cool and 50% warm LED emitters, which means you're often limited to half the output of a similar single color source LED. If you're planning on using this in a purely warm white environment, your output will be reduced when you have to add a tungsten filter. For most of my situations, I prefer full power daylight balanced as I'm often competing with sunlight. If you prefer color flexibility over sheer power, then the bicolor units might be the better option for you. For my testing, I've placed each light six feet away from a color target and made sure that the hot spot was centered. I'll be comparing these lights at full flood, full spot, and the on-screen graphics will show you the readings. No filters are fixed to any of these lights, so they are at their native color temperatures. Light meter is set to ISO 100 at a 60th of a second. Let's check it out. As you can clearly see, the Q55 Mark II beat the competitors in just about every configuration. Only the tighter spotlight of the dado light gave it a tiny edge in power output. Most surprisingly, the Q55 outperformed the 300 watt Fresnel by almost a half a stop in flood and one fifth of a stop in full spot. That's impressive, especially considering you could run five of these lights for the same 300 watt power as a single tungsten Fresnel. Power is great, obviously, but how about shadow quality and light fall off? I put a gobo 16 inches from each light to compare the shadows. A cleaner edge is typically a sign of better optics. The champion in this regard is going to be the Dado with its patented aspheric optics, but Volson lights perform admirably and will give you some nice tight shadow patterns when you need them. You could also see the difference in beam angle for each light, with the Volson range reported as 20 to 60 degrees. Colors appear to be clean and accurate. I don't have access to a spectrometer, but Came TV is claiming a CRI of 96 and a TLCI of 97 which means they're using premium quality COB chips. If your concern is flicker and high speed shooting, you shouldn't have any problems. I've tested this light at 480 frames per second without any signs of flicker. So what's my conclusion? Came TV has taken an affordable, versatile LED Fresnel light and made it even better for 2020. The additional power, features, built-in Wi-Fi, battery expansion slot, and quieter operation makes this a stellar value. The only downside for me is the relative quirkiness of the Bolton app and the somewhat fiddly method of recognizing and tethering your lights to the app. Thankfully, the Commander remote worked straight out of the box, and I eventually worked my way through all the procedures. As always, thank you for watching this. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. If you have experience with these and other LED Fresnel lights, I'd love to hear your input in the comments below. Until next time, happy shooting.